you can't make it as a Christian without the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You, you need the Holy Spirit to lead and to guide you into all truth, the Bible said. That's his job. Yeah. That's what he's going to do. He's going to lead you and guide you into all truth. Let's pray. Yeah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you thanks, we give you praise, we give you all the glory and the honor to your name, Lord. We ask that we decrease, O oh God, that you might increase. And Lord, let this word fall on good ground. Holy Spirit, have your way in us and through us, that we will have ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church today. In Jesus' name we all say, Amen. In Matthew chapter 3, it's talking about John the Baptist. John the Baptist was in his mother's womb around the same time Jesus was in the womb. These two are cousins, one to another. And it's a beautiful thing because Mary, when she was impregnated with Jesus, she met up with, it was Martha, right? Am I calling the right name? And they were both with child at the same time. But they were having this dialogue with each other. And as they were having this dialogue, the baby that was in her belly, Martha, leaped as because Mary was telling her her story. The Holy Spirit did something, I believe, in that moment. So the Holy Ghost was the impregnator of Mary that gave birth to Jesus Christ. In Matthew 3, 11, when ba John the Baptist got to a certain point in life, he began to baptize people with water. But when we get down to verse 11, it reads, it said, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. We don't need to read any further than that. Because when you become a believer and you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I don't want to use this microphone because it sounds too fuzzy and messy. It's sounding a, a hot mess. As we read through this scripture, and John the Baptist said to the people, I indeed baptize you with water. Yes. But he's telling of the coming, he was the one who's making straight way of the Lord. He is the one who is the introducer of his cousin, Jesus Christ. He's telling everybody that yes, I'm assigned here to baptize you with water. I think I, I, miss, I messed up the name. Yeah, of the mother, it's not. Yeah, it was Elizabeth. The Home Holy Ghost is correcting me right now. It wasn't Elizabeth. Mary and Martha is a whole different story. Y'all yeah. excuse me and forgive me because sometimes okay. we can mix up stuff. But the Holy Spirit stopped me right there, like that's not the mother. I'm like, <laughs> I see you looking, but the Holy Spirit's like, okay, yeah, it's it was not. saying it. Uh, he was speaking to me, and I said, I'm gonna look it up. Yeah, so well, I said, I think it's. I Elizabeth. just got a pause right there and said, No, <laughs> like the same time that ain't Martha. <laughs> she, no, she wasn't Elizabeth. Martha. It was the cousin Elizabeth yeah. was pregnant with John the Baptist. You know, you can get so much word in you, and it can come convoluted if you ain't reading. This yeah. is why the Bible tells us to study to show thyself approved. A workman who needs not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. When we go into a, a area that's an error, trust me, the Holy Spirit was like, nah, Deborah, that ain't, nah. It's it, like it hit the same time. Yeah, it, like it, that bit. ain't, nah, that ain't the one. <laughs> you mixing the names up. And I'm human. So yes. I mix that name up. But we're talking about Elizabeth and Mary who was pregnant at the same time. And John the Baptist came through Elizabeth. And then Mary we know is the mother of Jesus. So we got that out the way. But that's not the message today. The message today is talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit Amen. that comes through Jesus Christ. But there is a, a, a order in place. There is, if you will, a chain of command. John the Baptist had an assignment to baptize with water. 
but he's telling the people that there is one who's mightier than our, he's making straight way the, the Lord. He's telling people that Jesus Christ is coming, that there's the Messiah is coming. He's on his way. I'm doing this, but the power that's coming behind me is greater than what you see going on right here and there. And it's coming through Jesus Christ, who happens to be his cousin. Yes. So he said that he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And what I wanted to do is break down this scripture. What does it really mean for you to be baptized with the Holy Spirit and with fire? Because the two go together. And I don't know about you, when I first got saved, and I remember when I got baptized with the Holy Spirit, I remember when the Spirit of God entered into me, then the, the, the gifts of tongues came after that. And when I tell you I felt like a fire in the pit of my belly, the fire was something where that kind of goes together with the, with the Holy Spirit. I can't completely explain it yet, but Holy Ghost, give me the assistance I need to break this down. So in John 16 and 13, it says, but when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears and he will tell you what is yet to come. In another scripture, it says that you can't even say Jesus Christ is Lord without the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one who bears witness of the life of Jesus Christ. He is the one who gives you the ability to teach. He gives you things to remember and recall through the scripture that you learn. And it's some things that you don't know, but because you have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will bring up words, the word of God in you. And you wouldn't even know that you read it. I can remember I was saying that hell has opened her mouth wide. And little did I know when I was saying that scripture, there's an actual scripture in the Bible that talks about hell opening its mouth wide and receiving people. When I read that, I was like, wow, that had to come from the Holy Spirit. Because I don't know nothing about hell opening this wild mouth wide. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit is going to teach you all things and bring them to your remembrance. This is so important for you as a believer to have the Holy Spirit, the third person. And this is like on the day of Pentecost when Jesus told them to wait. Because after Jesus, this power is coming and it's going to come on you and remain on you. And it's going to give you certain ability to assist you in your spiritual walk with God. You can't do this without the Holy Ghost. We can't have service without the Holy Ghost. We can't even worship and praise God without the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is needed so he can teach you. Like when I was in error saying the wrong name, Holy Ghost put a pause like, hold on, that ain't the right name. I felt that instantly. You need to correct that. So you was looking, but my spirit man was saying, no, nah, that's the wrong. It felt wrong coming out. But I can make a mistake. You find in preaching, you'll find a lot of folk that make mistakes in scripture when you study and read it. So in this scripture text, John the Baptist is giving a heads up of Jesus Christ coming. When Jesus Christ came, do you not know that John the Baptist had to baptize Jesus? After Jesus Christ went through the order of things, because you have to be baptized. You have to accept Jesus Christ first. You have to be baptized. That is uh, telling the whole world that I'm buried with him in baptism. And I believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. This is why we get baptized. We're acknowledging to the world that I believe in the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. This is why we get baptized. But when you get baptized in the Holy Spirit, you will receive power, the scripture says. After the Holy Spirit has come upon you, 
you will begin to speak in tongues. The scriptures say you will take up serpents. They might bite you, but you won't die. Mm -hmm. There are certain things that's going to happen when that power comes upon you. You have a certain authority. You have a gift to do the things that Jesus Christ did. You can lay hands on the sick. The Bible says they will what? They will recover. You have a certain power that comes on you after the Holy Ghost has come. So I said, what does, what does fire do? So we, we received the, the, the gift, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The evidence is speaking in tongues. A lot of us have the gift of speaking in tongues. That's the evidence that you've been baptized with the Holy Spirit. That is the seal that God has stamped on you that you belong to him. That's your seal. Yes. Did you know that, Amber? Yes. God put a stamp on you. Say, you mine. I'm yours. I'm, you received of my spirit. There's a relationship between you and God. And there is a fellowship because when you accept Jesus Christ, not only do you receive Jesus, but he said the Father and I are one. We will make our abode with you. So now you have Father, Son, but when you get the Holy Spirit, it's like the icing on the cake, baby. Amen. You will be endued with power from on high. It's a power that yes. the devil know who belongs to God. Yeah, amen. The devil know who been stamped. He said he gives the Holy Spirit to those who what? Obey him. It's in the book of Acts. Let me get that scripture because you need that one. He gives the Holy Ghost to those who obey him. Let me see. Too. Holy Spirit. Give me a second. The Holy Spirit is in the book of Acts. I don't know if y'all ever read it. Have you ever read it? I've heard it. I've read it before. But I don't know where it is. He gives off. I should have had it written down already. Here we go. Acts 5 and 32. In the book of Acts chapter 5 and 32... Because I don't know all this Bible. I read it and study it like you. And there's some things I don't know. And I ain't going to pretend like I know it. Amen. But I know what the Holy Ghost have put down on the inside. It's in my belly. I know it's there. I've read it before. But I don't always memorize every place where I know where the scripture is. So in the book of Acts chapter 5 verse 32. It said, and we are his witnesses of these things. And so is the Holy Ghost whom God have given to them that obey him. God don't give everybody the Holy Ghost like that. I don't know why people always think that everybody's got it. Everybody don't have it. And if you don't have it, you better pray and ask God for it. So you can receive of his spirit, but you have to be in a place where you obedient to God. The scripture is very clear that he gives the Holy Ghost to those who obey them. I can remember when I was searching for God. I didn't know Jesus Christ. And we had this cousin, Carol, who we met up at Bubba's house. Lala was there. Mama was there. I was there. I was not saved at the time. But cousin Carol, I believe she was a prophetess. Because she began to pray on all of us, lay her hands. She had her oil probably in her hands already. She laid her hands on Lala. When I tell you she laid her hands on that woman, her eyes got big and she just sat there and eyes wide stretched open. <laughs> I promise you. When I seen her, I knew that was a demon surfacing up on her. Like, what's going on here? And nothing happened. She laid her hands on mama. She began to prophesy to mama and speak some things to mama. And mama was saved and in church. And I believe mama received the God spirit at some point. She laid her hands and prayed on me. When I tell you, I began to weep and cry. This woman laid her hands on me and began to prophesy to me. Deborah, you've been searching for something. You gonna find God. And she began to speak a whole lot of stuff in my life. Nobody could have known but the Holy Spirit. Right. I knew it was true. The tears would stop pouring down my 
my face when this woman of God was praying on me. I remember when that woman of God prayed on Steve. Yeah. She poured buckets of oil on her head, slapped his head, had that head out. Pick him up. He went to that ground. But do you remember that, Amber? I know you remember that. I remember that. It was a woman of God used to travel six overseas, six building six up five. churches everywhere. Six when five. I tell you she prayed on this six man five. several times, I was in my five. seat. I was I was crying and I had completely lost it, but my eyes was fixed up there. She began to pray on Steve. And that Holy Ghost, she dumped oil in her head. She put that oil on her head, and that brother went back, boom, down to the ground. She said, pick him up. And they picked him back up. She laid her hands on him again. Pow! She was casting spirits off of you. She was casting demons off of you in Jesus' name. I'm watching this woman. It was some deliverance taking place. This man started... I seen a switch in your life when this woman of God prayed on you, and it was about five or six steps. I said, she, she, see, she did something me as a wife. I couldn't do that to him because he wouldn't have received it from me. But this woman was establishing churches overseas. And when I tell you she was praying on that head, pop, that brother went down, <laughs> pick him back up, pop. He went back down, pick him up. It was authority that came through her. Holy Ghost huh? got a hold of you yes. in Jesus' name. And I looked at that. That man came back drunk in the spirit. I knew God was doing something in your life. I've seen the demonstration of the Holy Ghost and see something else in my own personal life. I was one of these silly Christians when I first got saved. And I didn't understand what it was to be slain in the spirit. And I, I'm i new in Christ. I know Jesus is Lord. But why is it that these people falling down on the floor? I ain't never seen nothing like this in my life. So I used to laugh. I said, they look like they playing. I just said, God, this is a true story. I went to a Morris Cirillo conference. And when I tell you, I'm seeing this man of God operating his gift. The power of God was so heavy in the place. People was paralyzed in wheelchairs, getting up out of the wheelchairs, walking down the aisle. Mm. And when I tell you, I did not believe this level of spiritual things happening. I went up there. I want to see what's going to happen to me. So when I took that walk up as I'm walking and God is a witness as I'm walking up here, the presence of God began to come down on me and I began to shake all over and I could not control it. The power of God was so heavy on this man of God. When I got there and he laid his hands on me and when I tell you I went down in the spirit, I was convinced. This thing is real. Yeah. And can't nobody change my mind about what I witnessed that the Holy Ghost can do through somebody who is submitted and yielded unto God. I couldn't hardly get up. People was assisting me to get up. The anointing was so heavy on me, I could barely walk. You talk about drunk in the spirit. I was drunk in the spirit. And I went back to my seat. And when I tell you, I never said another word about is this real or not. I'm convinced because now it happened to me. The Holy Spirit used to hit me so hard. Merla can tell you, when I first experienced the Holy Spirit coming down on me, I, I, I saw this big bright light. And it felt like I was floating out of my body. And the power of God was would rest on me so heavy back when I first got saved. It wasn't nothing to play with. But, but I didn't think getting slain in the spirit was real. I really didn't. Mm -hmm. Until I went to that Morris Cirillo conference. And I believe in the power of the Holy Ghost. I believe in God's anointing. I believe in the presence of God to change anybody. I'm a witness to it.
I'm a witness. The Holy Ghost is real. Remember I told y'all about laying hands and praying on a car where the engine had a hole in the cylinder block. We prayed on a car and the car started and drove a few miles before it clunked out. You tell me the Holy Ghost didn't start that car. Ain't no way a car supposed to start with an engine, a hole in the engine cylinder block. No way. But it's impossible with no man. Way. It's possible with God. Yes. And the Holy Spirit will show himself strong when we believe. We believe in God. Trust in him. You see all the miracles that Jesus did. Yes. When the spirit descended upon Jesus like a dove and the heavens opened up and God spoke to every witness that was on this earth, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. God witnessed that Jesus Christ was the son of God by speaking through the clouds in heaven. I wasn't there, but I believe it happened. Because once that power came upon Jesus, once that power came, he submitted himself to being baptized by his cousin, John the Baptist. John the Baptist knew who Jesus was. He was like, I'm not worthy, but you've got a job to do, John. You have to baptize me because Jesus had to submit to the laws on this earth. And that's the only way he could have did God himself in the flesh had to submit to his own laws. Yeah. Awesome. He had to be born. He had to go through being baptized. He had to be, be uh, immersed in the water. And he had to receive the spirit because he was in flesh. Thank God powerful. Yeah. When you see all this stuff that he did mm -hmm. to wrap Jesus up in flesh and bring him down here to die and to rise and Give us of his spirit. Who, who, wouldn't work, who wouldn't worship him? The fire. This is what I read. What does the fire do? You be baptized with the Holy Ghost. We know the Holy Ghost. You be endued with power. You have an authority. You have a seal on you. These are the things that's the evidence of the Holy Ghost. You begin to speak in tongues. You begin to do things that you know natural flesh can't do. You begin to operate in spiritual things and spiritual gifts because you've been filled with the Holy Ghost. And what does the fire do? This, the Holy Spirit gave me, this kind of fire is the fire that purifies you and purges you and keeps you holy because it's teaching you how to live how God requires you to live. That's what the Holy Ghost do. So the definition in the regular dictionary says there's a burning sensation in the body. I said, how y'all know? <laughs> y'all experience the Holy Ghost too? That was my first question when I read this out of the dictionary because man wrote this definition of, of fire. His definition is a burning sensation in the body. That's exactly what the Holy Ghost do. Sometimes you get that burning in the pit of your stomach. When the Holy Ghost is really on the inside of you, am I right, Marilla? You begin to speak in tongues. And when he's overwhelming and dwelling in you, the fire hits you. It is a burning in the pit of your belly. You begin to speak in them tongues. And you begin to glorify God. You don't even understand what's going on. But there's something supernatural going on yes. in your spirit, man. Amen. You ain't never experienced it. You better get obedient with God. Get in line with obedience. People who disobedient to God don't have his spirit. Everybody in church don't have the Holy Ghost. Don't let people lie to you. If you have not experienced this, you better, our cousin Carol, the same woman of God that prayed and prophesied over me, said, start praying and asking God for the gift of speaking tongues. I knew I had the Holy Spirit when I seen that bright light. And then I began to shout. I knew Jesus Christ had came into my life and something had, I knew the Holy Spirit, I knew it was God had took the presence in me. That's when I received of Jesus, I believe. When I received of the Holy Ghost, when I began to speak in tongues and that fire hit, 
in your belly. The, the gift of tongues began to pour out. And, and, and it was uncontrollable. I don't know how your first experience was. was. I, I, I began to utter this language, same thing with Amber. We turned around. I was praying on Amber at Fresh Start Ministries. And I can't take account for what the Holy Spirit did to her. She wanted the Holy Spirit. So she had been seeking for, I did not know this. But after I took my hands off of her, all of a sudden I heard the, you know spirit recognized spirit. She started in her little soft, that little soft voice speaking in tongues. And then the fire started hitting you, didn't it, Amber? It started welling up in your belly. She got louder and louder. It started out, and we all stood at attention and looked back. I remember that, yeah. I remember that. And that fire, that kind of fire, you will never forget that. You will never forget when you get baptized with the Holy Ghost and the fire hits you, there is something about when that presence hits you, baby. Yes. I, I see Steve a little bit. He said, you stand there, you be like this. You be drunk in the spirit. And then hit the floor. Davey looking at me like you going to catch him. I'm like, I ain't trying to catch this big guy. <laughs> if he hit the floor, he going to hit it. But the gift of speaking in tongues, you got to start asking God for. Mm -hmm. And now that you put your feet on a path of walking in obedience, God going to fill you with the Holy Ghost, with his, the gift of speaking in tongues. That's the evidence. But the fire, the fire purges. You get the Holy Ghost and fire, something about that fire. Why people don't talk about fire in church? They don't talk about the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. This church don't believe it. Fire. They believe in John the Baptist. Purges. It purges. It does something on the inside. It's like a continual flame that's burning on the inside of you. It might go down a little bit. You might get a little carnal on some days, but I tell you, when you've been filled with the Holy Ghost, you ain't going to get that far from God. Because the Holy Ghost, the spirit of truth, is going to well up on the inside of you. The, in John 14 and 26, it says, 14 and 26, it says, But the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything that I have said to you. He will bring things to your remembrance. Even when I screwed up with Martha, that's like, no, Mary and Martha is the wrong story. Okay, so let's get back to, boom, Holy Ghost said, no, nah, that ain't right. The Holy Spirit will bring things to your remembrance, even certain songs that I liked when I first got saved. Sometimes the Holy Spirit will bring those songs back up. He'll bring certain scriptures back up. Scriptures you might be thinking they lay dormant. I didn't know what Adonai was. But somewhere in my praise, when I begin to pray and pray before God, the word Adonai, I was like, Adonai, what did that mean? I started looking it up. I can't even think of the meeting right now. So let me go look it up. I said, and Elohim was another word that the Holy Spirit gave me. It's a name for God. Yeshua. And when I, yeah, Yeshua. Yeshua. What well, like, is Yeshua? The Holy Spirit gave it to you. <laughs> Yahweh. Gave me Yahweh. Now, that, I knew that one because we sing about uh, Yahweh, Yahweh. His name is Yahweh. The Lord is one. But Adonai, uh, my Lord, is one of his names. And another time I was studying the Holy Spirit gave me that scripture. You you took it and put it on Facebook, and one of the, the old members from our church took it and ran off with, his name is Jealous. Oh, yeah. I gave Steve the that pastor, scripture. I said, you know, God got every mm -hmm. name, mm -hmm. and he, he's so powerful. He's so wonderful to leave us the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit gave me that scripture. And I went to that scripture and I shared it with Steve. He put it on Facebook and then she put it on her page like she didn't ran off the cliff with it. Found it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she ran off the, the, the cliff. In certain things, the Holy Spirit, he knows all the information connected with God. 
And when God gives you certain nuggets, it's amazing. When he said that, I said, yeah, she didn't act like she didn't got some unction in front of the Holy Spirit and grabbed it off your page and ran off the cliff with it. Oh, God yeah. named me jealousy. <laughs> and ran off with it. I was like, it's in Old Testament. Is, yeah. Is that. It's a consuming fire. But not just that. It said his his God. name is jealous. Wow. Oh, I name. think I read that. His name, name is jealous. It was, it was listening to all his names. All and and God. and when I read that, I said, you know, God, his name is jealous. God is everything like you. God, you just too much. Let me say his name is jealous. This is in Exodus 34 and 14. What it tells you that God, you shall uh Thou shalt worship no other God, mm -hmm. for the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. When I read that, I lost it. I said, God, you just too much for me. I can't handle yeah. you. You said Exodus what? Exodus 34, jealous. verse 14. Mm -hmm. It says, for thou shalt worship no other God, for the Lord, whose name mm -hmm. is Jealous. I say your name is jealous. That means that listen, when we enter into a relationship, you and I, it ain't going to be having no affairs with no demons and devils. You got to have your eyes fixed on me. I don't want nobody else but you and you want me. That's relationship right there. There's commitment. That's deep. I should do a message on that. But you posted on Facebook. I said this girl and ran off the cliff. She put on her her bag. His name is jealous. <laughs> oh, like you, like you really read the scripture and study. Right. You, you ran right off the cliff with it. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Show did. I got the priest on that. He's telling on the priest on that. Show. I'll tell you something else. He showed the pastor priest on that. I pray something was said that encouraged you. Be blessed in the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen.